uh, please uh, permit me to confirm that um, all the members are present. And uh, please state your name uh, or state your presence when I call your name. So uh, Grant Gibeon, Shane, Shane Blundell. Here. Uh, John Ellis. Here. Makaya Healy. I know you're here, Makaya. Here, sorry. Mary Margaret. I'm here. Uh, Arif Padaria. Uh, Jonathan Wallach. Jonathan. Here. Um, I'm here. Brian Beck. Peter Howard. He's here, but he's doing something on my computer right now. <laughs> uh, Shailene Crawford. Here. Uh, Shailene Pokers. Here. Uh, Daryl Harmer. Here. John Dice. Ellen Jones. Annie LaCourt. Uh, Bill Keller. Here. Al Tossi. Here. George Koser. Here. Christine Deschler. Here. Dean Carmen. Here. And David McKenna. Here. So um, we have Peter, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 uh, members attending. So we have a quorum. So uh, I have to. Jones and LaCourt are not there. 15 oh, oh. are there. I, okay, not, okay, I called you in. I called <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, um, good so good evening. Uh, this open meeting in the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of uh, COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, We've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public or public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. The meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to ediggins at town.arlington.ma.us.com. This meeting is convening by a Zoom video app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website. Unless otherwise noted, the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Before we turn to the first item in the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effect effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members inviting each to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold your name, hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think Alan Jones is here. Uh, Peter, which it wasn't on the roll call. Okay. And uh, I don't, is anybody else here? Uh, Grant Gibbons here. Grant, here yes, Grant joined too. And John Dice also. Okay, John Dice now and um, Grant. Okay, good. So um, some comments as we get into the uh, meeting tonight, uh, we're, we're coming down to the final stretch. And um, the last thing we have to do is the finance committee report the town meeting. But tonight, I think we will finish uh, all the uh, uh, votes and, 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 and business of putting together the budget. 
So I want to I want to thank um, everyone for the cooperation and support and energy that you've put into the, this uh, process in the last three months. It's really been uh, outstanding and uh, very uh, very effective. And I appreciate the support you've given me since this is my first time um, in this rodeo as uh, chairman. So uh, thank you very much for for everything. Um, I wanted to briefly report that I had a discussion with uh, State Representative uh, Sean Garberly today, and uh, he has um, he he was able to give us the uh, most important numbers of the of the uh, <coughs> the, the um, House Ways and Means Committee version of the budget that's going into the um, cherry sheet. The, this, the cherry sheet, at least when I checked around five o'clock, was not yet completely published, but Sean did confirm that Arlington would have the same um, Chapter 70 money and the same uh, UGA, which is uh, unrestricted uh, general accounts or just the general government aid. Government aid. Um, uh, as, as was in the governor's budget. Now, there are a couple of subtleties to this. Um, he mentioned that every city and town is getting the same UGA amount. Uh, that hasn't changed. But some cities and towns are getting different amounts of, of Chapter 70 money. And uh, Arlington's did not change, but other cities and towns, Chapter 70 will be somewhat increased. And these are towns that qualify under a program called um, the a student Opportunity Act, which was passed last year. And there is another acronym uh, that he mentioned that has to do with this. Um, and, and so some, basically it's, it's some sort of a, a wealth metric. And, um, and so he said that the, most of the increases basically have gone to gateway cities that have uh, higher populations of lower income people. And there may be uh, later this year or next year, additional funds for Chapter 70 uh, for Arlington. But first, these funds are going to be distributed um, to the cities and towns that I just mentioned. Um, we will have more details on this as soon as the, uh, the state website puts up the, the details of the cherry sheet. So in any event, this moves us to the position where we can vote the final portions of the budget. So tonight, um, uh, Alan Jones is going to present the override stabilization fund and some minor budget adjustments. Um, and then Al Tosti is going to talk about the real estate uh, transfer tax. And then we should be virtually done for the evening. So this should be a, a quick meeting. So uh, let, let me move to the minutes. Uh, anybody have any questions about that, by the way? Oh, I'm noticing that uh, select person Diane Mahan is on the video. Uh, Diane, welcome to the Finance Committee. Um, Peter, do you note that? Yes, thank right. you. So, um, Peter, uh, minutes from uh, April 12th, please. Um, thank you. The, <clears throat> the minutes were circulated for comma, and I got several extensive comments. I learned a few things, um, I, <clears throat> and I made all the corrections. Um, I move that they that the minutes of uh, uh, April twelfth uh, be approved as corrected. Second. 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 Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. So the minutes have been moved and seconded. Any co uh, comments, conversations, or remarks or questions about the minutes? Hearing none, we'll proceed with a vote on the minutes uh, to, to accept the minutes. Grant Gibeon? Aye. Uh, Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Makaya Healy? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif Padaria? Not here. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Brian Beck. Peter Howard. Yes. Daylene Pokers. Yes. Daryl Harmer. 
Yes. Van Dyst. Yes. Tom Jones. Yes. Andy LaCourt. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Altasti. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. It's uh, the minutes are accepted unanimously. Okay, so um, Alan, um, could you uh, please take over with respect to presenting your uh, your budget summary and um, also um, um, move motion on the override stabilization fund and other uh, budget items uh, with the uh, overriding uh, statement that we are doing this under the Dean Carmen budget adjustment um, motion or, or uh, practice. Alan? Sure. Thank you, Charlie. Um, we're going to go from the ridiculous to the sublime. Um, and the, the ridiculous thing is that uh, our uh, retirement estimate has been adjusted by PARAC by $44. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to revote the retirement budget. Um, it increases the contributory pensions to 14 million 041,972 with a total of $12,635,573. Um, so, uh, and that's, that's what you should be seeing on your screen. So I, I, I move 12,635,573 for the retirement budget. Is there a second? Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Any uh, questions on the adjustment to the retirement budget? Okay, um, hearing none, seeing none. Um, Grant Gibeon. Yes. Dean Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Mary Margaret Franklemont. Yes. Uh, Reef. No, Reef. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Uh, Brian Beck. Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Um, John John Dice. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Andy Lacourt. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tassi. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Uh, Charlie, I'll abstain, please. Okay, one abstention. All right, so. Peter, uh, we have one, two, three, uh, we have one, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen voting in favor, uh, none in opposition, and one extent, uh, one abstention. Do you have that, Peter? I got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Carry on. Okay, so now we're going to head into the appropriation of the from the override stabilization fund, and. This uh, shrunken figure here is uh, Appendix C from the Finance Committee report. Not showing, Alan. You've still got the retirement. Oh, I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me uh, share again. Okay. You can now see it small, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so th this is Appendix C, which is supposed to be the one page summary of the entire budget. Uh, that includes all the revenues and all the expenses. It's, it's Appendix C in the Finance Committee report. And if you want to look at all the uh, details, uh, it's on the SharePoint site under draft budgets. Uh, so I want to take a, just a real quick walk through leading up to the override uh, stabilization fund appropriation. Um, on the revenue side, this is where the main part of the revenue is the property taxes, where we start with last year's levy, add two and a half percent new growth and the debt exclusions, and end up with a, a property tax revenue of 142 million 742 uh, The next revenue source was is school aid. Right now, we're not getting any school aid because that's all been paid out. The next revenue source is local receipts. And here's the detail of motor vehicle excise and all these things that add up to 8.8 .8 million. And we scroll down a little bit. This is the cherry sheet that Charlie was talking about where uh, the state gives us a lot of money and takes away some money. Uh, the big one that Charlie mentioned was chapter 70, the school aid and the unrestricted government aid. 
and uh, these are the two that that really make up the difference, and they've stayed stable between the governor's budget and House Ways and Means for a total amount from the state of twenty three million five hundred and change. On the negative side, they take some money away. The largest of that is the MBTA assessment, of about three million dollars. You take that from the money they give us, we have a net of about. $20 million. That's the bulk of the revenue sources that we have to fund the town. In this section is the bottom lines of all of the budgets that you all have been working on in a one page summary. And uh, for example, the town manager budget, if I go back to what will be Appendix B, uh, that would be the bottom line here, 748 219, that gets fed over here. And every one of the detailed budgets in Appendix B gets fed into this column. Uh, the budget's under control of the town manager, under the select board, under the clerk, and then fixed budgets uh, like insurance and stuff. The other, another way we spend money is through the warrant articles that are not the budgets. Uh, the big ones there are the capital plan, which we treat as a warrant article, Minuteman, and then all the commissions and committees and whatever, and then OPEB for about a million dollars. Up here, we have the enterprise funds, and being enterprise funds, they all net out to zero. So there's no taxpayer dollars, except two of the enterprise funds require subsidies to balance their budgets. The Council on Aging Transportation, we're appropriating 50 million and Arlington Youth Counseling, we've re recommended the appropriation of 120 million. Um, now we get to the, the meat of it where these are all the revenues that are summarized. These are all the expenses that are summarized the town budgets, the school budgets, the capital plan, and all the other things. And if we go down to the bottom line, we see we have a $6.243, $6.2 million deficit that we have to make up. Now, the override stabilization fund is the place where when we have too much money, we put it into this big bucket, and we don't have enough money, we take it out. Well, we're sort of near the end of an override cycle, we're going to be taking money out of it. So to balance the budget, we're going to take six million two hundred forty three thousand two hundred and twelve dollars from the override stabilization fund which zeros out the bottom line to balance the budget so my motion is going to be to appropriate six million two hundred forty three thousand two hundred and twelve dollars from the override stabilization fund to balance the budget second no it's been moved and seconded thank you for that uh, very clear explanation alan um, let's see. This is where I live. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, uh, questions. Are there any questions about this uh, process, budget amount, or whatever? Yeah. Mr. Chair? Yes, Alan. Um, I'm looking at the February 5th long range financial plan. And it's got about five million nine, and now we're up to six million two, about three hundred thousand. And I'm just wondering, um, is it anything in particular that where we lost the three hundred thousand uh, state aid? You know, is there anything you could put his hands on? Um, we can look at a couple of things. Uh, go into some of the worksheets. These are this again is sort of a summary of all the budgets we voted. And these are the budgets that were in the uh, town managers, you know, the, the, the paper town managers book and the changes that have been made. So, for example, we took uh, 1,175 out of the finance committee. Uh, we uh, removed 10,000 uh, from the information technology and it ends up uh, bottom line in the budgets of about $388,000. Um, so in other words, the difference between what you saw in February is that that's reflecting what's in the town manager's budget book, but doesn't reflect all the changes we made. Um, another part of it is in the warrant articles where uh, this is what we voted and this is what was in the town manager's book. And a distance there is actually a reduction of a little over $100,000. Um, so what, what Sandy and I do is put the latest long range plan, which you just finished today, 
uh, and what we voted. And I put them side by side and we have to do some corrections because the long range plan line items aren't quite the same as the appendix C line items. But at the end of the day, we both end up with the same numbers. And that's how, that's the double checking we do to make sure we're on the same page. So to answer your question, the difference really is, is reflected in the long range plan. Um, and uh, you know, I can, you know, all the details here about where those things come from. Uh, for example, OPEB, we uh, increased that by uh, $300,000. That takes almost all of it. So you Really, it's really. Well, that, I mean, I'm sorry. This includes the three hundred thousand dollars from the health insurance trust fund that he doesn't count. So, yeah. So it looks um, like the big difference was the increase in health insurance. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if we go back to that. So you know, so I just you know take you on that quick tour to show how we sort of wrap all this up with Sandy to make sure that when we put the latest long range plan as Appendix D of the Finance Committee report, they match. And and also, it's a good you know again, this is. He's playing off one sheet of music and I'm playing off another sheet of music. We both end on the same note. That's a good thing. So Altasi, uh, any more questions? Nope, that's it, thank you. So are there any other uh, questions on the uh, uh, motion made to uh, withdraw $6,243,212 from the override stabilization fund? Al, do you know what the balance of the fund is? Uh, I don't, but um, give me a second. We'll probably pull up the... Uh, yeah, the five-year plan would tell us, probably. Yeah, the, the, the long-range plans are all on the, uh, you know, again, the SharePoint site. Think about 18 million. Uh, Yes, it's going into the year with 19 million. Okay, that's that's good enough. Jane Blundell, you have your hand up. I do. Thanks, Charlie. Can somebody? Very helpful presentation, Alan. Uh, as a newbie-ish person here, can, we're taking money out now, but can we just explain how money goes in? Just to the basics of how the money goes in. Well, the, the tradition in Arlington for quite a few years has been to pass overrides, which are larger than we need to fund that year's budgets. And by design, the surplus goes in to fill up this big pot of money. And if we're lucky, you know, the plan's usually to fill it up for maybe three years. And if we're lucky and do something smart, maybe it takes, you know, four or five, seven years. But then the structural deficit gets to a point where we're spending more than we're taking with property taxes. So now we're pulling money back out of it. So we, we pass overrides that are larger than we need, fill a bucket full of money, and then take it out in the, in the lean years. Thank you. The, uh, just Shane, just a, 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 a little editorial comment on that. The, re the basic reason is that um, if, we, if we were facing shortfalls every year, under Proposition Two and a Half, we would have to go to the voters every single year to get their approval. In the meantime, uh, there are all sorts of uh, uh, contract uh, obligations, you know, with different unions. Uh, you can imagine all of the complex uh, commercial operations that the schools and the town have, and and some of these have cancellation clauses and all sorts of other things that would have to be addressed uh, on an annual basis. And before we started doing this, one of the really bad things that happened is that um, school teachers were getting laid off in the spring, you know, and then somehow they would get re recruited back in the fall. But, it, you know, it was just a, a, a tough situation. So this planning process obviates that need. Alan, go ahead. Well, so this is uh, just a, a picture. The, the green is the stabilization fund. And this is where we started filling it up and filling it up and then draining it off again. And you can see in 2024, it goes out of zero. There's nothing left to spend. And that's why we're talking about another override, which would, again, fill the bucket up some and then come down later. Thank you. You're welcome, Shane. Um, are there other... Let me see. I just lost my... Uh, here we I go. have... Uh... Grant, Grant Vivian, yes, go ahead. 
I, I occasionally I keep losing the little thing that has the hands on it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Can't take it down. Um, so is it fair to say that the amount that we're transferring from the um, uh, stability fund would be um, the amount of the structural deficit for that particular year? Well, it's the de deficit for that year. I think the structural deficit's more, you know, long-term trends, but that's the deficit. I mean, this is this year's slice of the structural deficit. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, Charlie, oh, Jonathan, I have my oh, hand up. Yes. And then I see uh, Shailene. First Jonathan, then Shailene. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Um, Alan, can you put that graph back up that you just had? Yeah, in a second. I, I was struck by one thing, which is I just didn't know whether I was misreading it. This is the famous Arlington visual budget that Danny and I have been working on for years. Right. So, but we're not bragging, um, we're not bragging about it. <laughs> Alan, does this say that we're actually going to deplete the override stabilization fund uh, in 23 as opposed to in 24? Well, 24 is when we will need additional money. Yeah. And I, I Sandy updates the numbers behind here. Uh, if I, you know, again, if I pull up his, if I pull up the latest long range plan, this is possibly more up to date. Uh, well, it only goes up to 2022. Never mind. So oh, here we go. Five year. Jonathan, nor normally, so if we were running out of money in fiscal 24, we would have to have the override in calendar 23 prior to July 1st of 2023. It's always, it, it, it always uh, gets a little confusing. Well, if you can, if you can sort of look at it, so say so there's 24 million in the override stabilization fund last year, we spend 6 million, takes it down to 18, we spend 7 million next year, it takes it down to seven, we spend the rest of it in 2020, uh, 24, and there's not enough left, so there's a $7 million deficit. So if we, if we weren't using this stabilization fund, we'd have to have an override, we didn't have to cut 7 million out of the budget. Or have an override for seven million, and then do the same thing year after year after year. Yeah, but I was. This, I was this, you know, this tells by, you how by it the fact that there's no green for fiscal twenty three in that graph. That right after we've appropriated seven million in fiscal twenty three, it goes okay. to zero. So that's, there's no that's green. what it is. It's it's at the end of the basically at the end of the fiscal year. It, it's after what we were appropriated in twenty three. Okay, thank you. And there'd be a little bit left. I mean, if we. So here we can see an appropriation of 10 million. Uh, it's not on the yeah. screen. Uh, oh, it's not? Okay. No. Can't, can't see it. Well, the, the, the graph isn't, the long range. Uh, Nothing. Okay, sorry. I'm seeing you, which is great, but. but. <laughs> okay, you seeing it now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's here's the, the, the stabilization fund at 24 million. We're appropriating six million goes down eighteen million. Next year we'll have to appropriate uh, ten point something million. That takes it down to seven point something. Year after that we appropriate all of that, and it's not enough. There's a seven million dollar hole. So before we hit that seven million dollar hole, we then need to pass an override or reduce the budgets, cut the budgets. But that this is this is the year that has the problem. The zero here is the graph going to the, the green part going to zero. Now, I, I, I'd like to make an observation here, uh, which uh, Alan or Al Tosti, feel free to comment on. But I think a rule of thumb is that if we wanted to have an override last for three years, I think we'd have to, you know, that middle deficit there would probably have to be the size of the override, I think. Would, would that be a correct assessment? That's a back of the envelope assessment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. as a, somewhere in that magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to do it to the last penny. I'm just commenting that that fulfilling the seven million dollar deficit all by itself 
is helpful, but it doesn't get us multiple years. So the, the amount of the override has to be bigger than that by some amount to get rid of those three years of red that you see there on the on the screen. Yeah. And if you if you look at a no override scenario, we need to cut seven million out of the budget here, which would make this seven million lower. We have to cut twelve million the next year, which would make that lower, and then we have to cut another large chunk the year after that. And just one comment. If you look in fiscal uh, 25, the budget, the total property tax is about 152 million. <clears throat> We've never gone and override more than 10%, which would be 15 million. And you go down and we'd need an override approaching 20 million. Uh, the, the, the number is really very big. Now, you know, the, there's, um, I mentioned the other night that the town is expecting to get some, um, you know, there's this uh, wonderful $36.7 million that's coming from the federal government. Most of that is probably not available for this budget, you know, the, the budgets that we deal with. Um, probably most of it is gonna go to citizens organizations, Nonprofits, et cetera, people living in Arlington and organizations in Arlington, but not the not the government. But uh, to the extent that the town has incurred revenue losses or other extraordinary expenses that have not been otherwise reimbursed, we will get some percentage of that. Some it could be, you know, I, I have no idea what that would be. It could be. I would suspect it's more than a million dollars, but I also suspect it would not be more than three million dollars. So that would mitigate that amount a little bit, I think. Yeah, but that's also one-time money and, and we, we all know you don't spend one-time money on long-term expenses. No, but I, I still mentioning that there's, yeah. there's. So let's see, I lost the screen again. Hang on a minute. Um, Shailene, your hand was up, yes. Um, so since Shane was brave enough to ask a newbie question, I will also ask one. Um, well, and for a little while, I thought my question had been answered, and then I was just going to make a comment that I definitely think that Annie and Alan should brag about that graph. Um, uh, so that isn't even the coolest part. So <laughs> <laughs> then I'll take it offline to find out the even cooler parts because I think that's pretty cool. Um, it, I think, while looking at that spreadsheet we, that Alan just had up, um, my question was answered in that this 6.2 million we're about to vote on is in line with what we expected. Is that correct? Or are we beyond what we had expected? No, it's within $300,000. That's what uh, that's what Altasi was asking about before. Yeah. I think we, we were expecting a, a little bit less. There was a, uh, an increase in the health insurance because of uh, the number of employees and rates and other things that uh, caused, caused that to go up. Okay, so, I heard the 300. I think I missed Altasti's point of like, what was the three? Yeah, that actually closes that loop perfectly for me. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, you know, as part of this forecast, we had 6.2 million coming out of the stabilization fund. I see. So you can see then in um, fiscal 23, we're, we're expecting to need to draw 10 million down? Yes. Okay. And then the rest of it in I'm, 24. That I needed that much help reading forward in this um, spreadsheet, but what can I say? It's my second year on the finance committee. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I encourage everyone to get to know this spreadsheet intimately. It, it really drives a lot of decisions and, and illustrates the problem. I mean, if you, if you eliminate these takes out of the pool of money that we've saved up, you have a really big problem. Yep, definitely. And that's what the structural deficit is. We're spending more than we're making. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I see no more hands up on the on the on the little screen here. Are there any questions from the members that aren't putting their hand up? Yeah, I have a statement, Charlie. If I may, yeah, go right ahead, John. Um, I think it's important that. The whole town has to make the case, the whole town government, including us, have to make 
a very strong case about this override because it's a disaster if we don't get the override. I think you're right. I um, I think I think um, was it last week that was it Belmont that had an override on the ballot and it went down, right? It didn't get passed. Yes, it failed. Yeah. And so they they're facing a, you know, it's not quite the same size as the structural deficit that we have, but I think they're facing a, a big issue. Well, you know, this is a smaller town, I think, but um, proportionally, it may be about the same size, I would guess. And, uh, and so it's really important that we make the case about what's going to happen if it, if it doesn't go, if we don't get the override. Well, it's also a reason to try to be, um, what's the word, conservative in spending, too. Yes. Every nickel counts. OK, are there other questions or statements or comments from anybody on the committee before we uh, move forward on this vote? So oh, since we're making statements, I'd love to just say a couple words, Charlie. By all means, Andy. So um, I would encourage everybody to keep a cool head and not panic about either Belmont's override or about um, what we're facing. The nice thing about this projection is that it gets us a good advanced look and time both to consider our options and to communicate with the voters and the taxpayers and the people receiving these services about what exactly it is they want. Um, so um, it's good to be thoughtful, but it's not good to say, oh gosh, Belmont's went down, so will ours. Because I don't think you can compare either the moment or the dollar amount or the town circumstances to Belmont's. Um, we aren't gonna be asking for an override when everybody is still in lockdown. So my I, I, I shared with Charlie that when I was running a product development lab, I had a big sign on my desk that said, it's never too soon to panic. <laughs> and, you know, what I what I think is we we should all go Google for o Belmont override, look at the yes website and the no website and the position the finance committee took and start looking at those things, because it's not too soon to start both creating an override that we can sell and then figuring out how to sell it. It's not too early to start thinking. True, but that doesn't require panic. No, no I, I agree with that. Uh, however, I, I think it's very important that the people of the town realize what will happen if the override doesn't go through. And we have to have the town, the entire town has to make that case in my opinion. Well, I think the the um, presentation that Alan just gave, especially the discussion of the five year plan, but with with the uh, the, the deficit numbers there, is a, is an excellent um, what's the word I'm looking for here uh, re real world demonstration of the um, of the analysis that George Koser gave us about six weeks ago. What what you see there is you see the actual um, the numbers, which is which I think is sort of interesting. George, George went through a um, sort of a hypothetical or a theoretical approach, and, and this is this is breaking it down into, into the real numbers. Okay. Um, any further comments? All right. It's been moved and seconded um, for uh, the finance committee to vote in favor of um, withdrawing. Six million two hundred forty-three thousand two hundred twelve dollars uh, from the override stabilization fund to provide revenues for the town. And uh, I would like to add the caveat that all the cherry sheet numbers are not nailed down. Finally, at this point, we still haven't seen the um, the uh, charges that the state applies, which is a sort of the bottom half of the cherry sheet. We believe that they're not going to change, but there may be some adjustments to, to the budget and, um, and any such adjustments uh, would come under the Dean Carmen um, uh, motion and vote of, uh, I think it was two meetings ago. So- And this is the only number that would change. And the state takes another hundred dollars, we add a hundred dollars to this. Yeah. Okay, so let me proceed with the vote. Grant Gibeon. Aye. 
Uh, Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Mary Margaret. Yes. Arif Padaria. He's not here. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Uh, Brian Beck. He's not here. Peter Howard. Yes. Uh, Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. John Dice. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Lady LaCourt. Yes. Bill yes. Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Nadine Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Uh, so the uh, recommendation uh, for the amount of uh, $1,243,212 come from the override stabilization fund to the revenue side of town budget is passed unanimously. Um, and I thank you, uh, you all for the discussion on that. I think that, like the, several of the other budgets have been fairly substantial and are worthy of, uh, of uh, examination and discussion. So um, that's, uh, that's just great. Thank you. So the next item is uh, we have a, uh, a warrant, one warrant article that we have not made a decision on uh, one way or the other or to report or not to report. And that's something that we heard from um, uh, Jenny Rate earlier uh, this, I think it was in, might have been February or early March. Uh, and that's the real estate transfer tax. So, um, Al, you did some research on the status of that. Al Tosti, would you care to please comment on it for us? Uh, yes, I uh, originally thought that the select one were going to be voting on this this week. It turns out they voted on it last week. So the, the selectmen uh, have voted favorable action on going with the home rule legislation for the real estate transfer tax. Al, can I uh, all, this was all this was explained in the uh, uh, email that was forwarded from Doug Himes to me, to Charlie, and I think Liz sent it out to all the finance committee. Um, so I, I don't think I'm gonna go into that detail. Um, what's gonna be happening is then this article will then go to the legislature. The legislature will then either pass or not pass the home rule legislation. It will come back to the town this will have to go on a ballot question uh, for the uh, populace, uh, citizens to decide. And then town meeting will pass a bylaw um, to actually do the details and implementation. So we're not looking at this probably for a couple of years uh, that it comes back to town meeting. Now, a uh, couple of decisions uh, somebody's town meeting is going to have to make. Is it the buyer or the seller that's going to pay this? I really don't see that it's much difference. If the seller's got to pay for it, he's going to pass it on to the buyer. So, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't see that big a deal. Uh, it, it's, there's a range of interest rates, uh, which will have to be decided. Um, there's an exemption that can be allowed where anything below, like let's say below a million dollars can be exempt um, or below whatever is decided. Um, so anyway, and you all had a chance to read Doug's memo and the uh, vote of the town of the board of selectmen uh, select board. I don't. Uh, I don't seem to have gotten that, Al. It was, it it was SharePoint somewhere. Uh, I sent it to you all in SharePoint. I didn't get it either. I didn't. I didn't see it either. Through Outlook. April eleventh. If you're searching your email. So did I send it, Sh Shailene? Uh, yeah. Let me. Uh, I just searched my email and it looks like it came from Charlie. Yeah, I thought it sent uh, to all of the finance committee, but it went. So this confuses me. It it went to FinCom at Arlington FinCom dot online, and sometimes I get things at town, and sometimes I get things at at Arlington FinCom. So I don't know if that helps anyone. You may need to log into SharePoint and check your email if you know how. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it does got it in SharePoint. I just haven't seen it. So, uh, but let me let me add to that, uh, but, uh, Annie. Th the documents that Al included mm -hmm. are the same documents that um, that um, mm -hmm. Je Jenny and her 
colleague whose name I can't remember right now used when they presented to us, and they and they put, gave us the documents then as well. Go ahead, Al. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and it's a select board, Al. Right. I'll, I'll, another two to five years, I'll probably get that down. Uh, and I'd like to uh, make a recommendation. My recommendation is that the Finance Committee take no position on this article. Uh, I do that for four reasons. Number one, number one there's no appropriation. Uh, so this is a select board article. Uh, number two, there's no broad tax impact. In other words, unlike the CPA, when that was, a, uh, everybody was gonna pay a certain piece. This only hits you if you're gonna sell your property and move out of town and we don't care about them anyway. Um, just kidding. <laughs> so there's no appropriation. There's no broad tax impact in the, in the next couple of years. There's no impact on the budget. No general fund revenues are gonna come in or out of it because of this. It doesn't have a short or a long-term impact on the financial health. And this is basically a policy select board article um, I know we've had a tendency this year to get involved in select, and select board business, uh, but I really think uh, uh, this is a select board article. It's not a finance article. Uh, if somebody asks a question about a tax impact, uh, Charlie can, uh, the chairman could get up and answer that. Uh, so I move that we take no position on this article. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second and a quick comment is that I think that uh, we, we tabled this because it was gonna be sent back to the uh, select board specifically for some type of appropriation. So nothing has changed in that respect. So um, I think it makes full sense to, um, to table it. Thank you. Well, that's a nice cat you have. I beg your pardon? Your, your gray cat is sitting right next to you. Oh yeah, that's Beautiful. one of two cats. I, uh, <laughs> they're twins, so I don't know which one it is, but... Uh, which one are you? <laughs> Say hi. Okay, let's see. back to the right. matter at hand. Thank you. Thank you. That was what I wanted to say. Any other comments on this article? Okay, so it's been moved that we have a no report on that. Um, since it's been uh, in front of us for a long time, it's been tabled, it's come back. I think we should just do a quick vote. Uh, any more comments? I don't see any more comments. Grant Gibbion? Aye. Uh, oh, yes. I mean, uh, no report. Correct. No report. Uh, uh, Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Saya Healy? Yes. Mary Margaret Franklin? Yes, for no report. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Ryan Beck's not here. Peter Howard? Yes. Jaylene Poker? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Uh, John Dice? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. New Court? Yes. Keller? Yes to no report. Al Costi? Yes. George Closer? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Yeah. Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Thank you. So um, it's, it's clear everybody supports everybody's no report on that article. Okay. So we have completed the, uh, the basic business objective of tonight. Um, we are working on the uh, Finance Committee report. You've seen the, a big body of work from uh, Al Jones uh, on the, uh, uh, the financial side of it. And uh, tomorrow I'm hoping that uh, Liz and I will be charging ahead on the, on the um, Microsoft Word uh, textual side. And we are, there is a folder on SharePoint that says um, fiscal 22 uh, report to town meeting in the fiscal, in the FY22 folder section. So that inf the information is gonna be there in real time, both the budget side and the, and the text side. So you can have uh, access to it, to view it, make comments, et cetera. And I will be sending out emails to people um, at, at key points asking for reviews. Now, Al Jones, Alan Jones sent out an email about a week ago on the budgets. And I think, Alan, how many responses have you had? You're muted. A, a, a few. Um, 
what I when I put together like the final draft with all the formatting and stuff, I'm going to send it out again, and, and I ask everybody to just double check the numbers and to get new head counts. Tell me about any typos. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, I think Al Tassi can tell you it's a it's a painful process to stand up in front of town meeting, or in this case, sit down in front of town meeting, and go through you know eight or ten minutiae changes to um, you know to make things come out the right way so if you can check all of those budgets and and other items uh, in the report that would be really helpful uh, okay any old business to address tonight that have been on people's minds okay so um we're going to try to bring the uh report to press, the, oh, it, oh, one comment that I wanted to make um, is that I know that uh, John Ellis is probably gonna wanna whack me in the head on this, but um, I am going to, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to hard copy with this report for the town meeting members. Having gone through the fall town meeting and watching uh, so many people have difficulties with managing the, uh, the town app and the Zoom app at the same time. I cannot imagine how they're gonna be able to be looking at a, a PDF on the screen of the budget and, and not have things just you know, completely devolve into chaos. So, um, so we are gonna go to hard copy and get that out to the town meeting members. Um, and I think uh, with this, the next, um, meeting will be the opening night of town meeting at 7.30. We normally have a half an hour budget. I, I don't know what the program is to this year for the state of the town meeting, uh, if there's any, if it's, if it's gonna start at eight o'clock as it has in the past or it's gonna start earlier. But basically we have a, um, a FinCom meeting usually every night at town meeting for, the, for a half an hour before that. So any questions, comments? Thank you all very much. Thank you for your support the last couple of months. Um, I, have to, I have to make one comment, and that is that uh, this experience since, uh, since last June has imprinted on my mind the tremendous effort and work and job that Al Tosti has done for the past couple of decades. I can't believe, um, I, I, I don't know, I can't understand how he, how he managed to do that. And, and that was, I think um, the, the technology that we've had this year with uh, SharePoint and some of these other features that the IT group has put up, forward, put up for us has made it a lot easier. So um, I just uh, have to say that I'm, my hat's off to Al for all of the, the effort that went in prior times. So motion to adjourn is in order. So move. Second. Oh. John, you're saying John is John Ellis is okay with printing. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's it's always on recycled paper. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any objections to adjourning? I hear them, no objections, so we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hey. See you all on the other side. Uh, good night. Good night.